Right, BA has announced change to how it manages membership years. It's quite a simple change when you're writing a script to try and explain it. But the implementation of the change is really quite complex when you have 12 different membership years in the scheme that you're transitioning from. And the medium term consequences of this change are quite significant. I don't usually make reaction videos like this because there are a number of excellent blogs that can react much more quickly than I can. Making a video like this is no small undertaking. I mean, I have to do my hair before I can go on camera as an example. But this change is a very significant one and I have been asked to respond. So in this video I'll explain those changes, or at least I'll try to, but I'll focus more on the implications. So I think this is a way that I can contribute something to the overall discussion. And because I crave structure I will present six implications of this change. So if that sounds good, stick around and wish me luck. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Matt's Planet. I aim to entertain, educate and inspire with my travel adventures from planning to execution. I'll show you how you can travel in style for a lot less than you'd think. So subscribe so you can come with me. So what happened? Well, on the 5th of February, British Airways announced that from next year, everyone's membership year ends will be aligned on the 31st of March. See, it's a very easy change to explain. How you get there, the transition plan, is a little bit more complicated, but again, it's not that hard to explain. Every membership year that is in progress will continue and complete without any changes. Any status that has been earned from those years, or will be earned in the course of those ongoing years, will be honoured. Quite simple, although BA did indicate in its original communication that status earned in years already underway would be effective, although they released an update quite quickly after the original release which corrected that. And it also explains why they really had to make this announcement in early February, because it means every ongoing status year will be completed before March the 31st next year. This change means that everyone's next membership year will end on the 31st of March 2025, and it also means that everyone's next membership year will have the same dates. It'll last from the 1st of April 2024, which is only about seven weeks away, through to the 31st of March 2025. And everyone's next membership year will be made up of two periods. The time between the expiry of their current year and the 31st of March, and the part of their current membership year which overlaps that time, which is any period from the 1st of April to the end of the current membership year. Again, quite simple to explain, but pretty difficult to visualise, so every time I need to illustrate a video like this, I reach for Excel. Yes, I know how weird that sounds. So let's look at my situation, which is an August year end. My current year will end on August the 8th, but I've rounded that to the end of July in this chart but the next membership year will already be underway. Indeed, I'll be five months into it by this time. So that means there will be seven new months of my next year before the year ends, and five months will overlap with the year I've already had. So to determine any status earned in that year, BA will look at the tier points gathered in those two periods, the seven new months and the five overlapping months. So tier points earned in that five month period will count twice. They'll count towards the year I'm currently in and they'll also count towards the next year. That will actually create an opportunity that I'll talk about a little bit later on. And no, the double counted tier points won't go into your lifetime tier point balance twice. You'd only get them once. Rob and Reese at Head for Points have done a very clear explainer of the 12 month ends, but I've taken that little table and done it 12 times myself. Freeze the video if you want to take a closer look. I've started with April, which apart from an eight day overlap is not really affected by this. You can sail through these changes without really worrying about them too much. Years after this have lengthening overlap periods. There's August again, and those with a March year end will have just over an 11 month overlap period. I'll talk about the consequences of this in the next section. So the first implication of this might not be what you expect me to say, but for quite a number of people, this change will be excellent. I made a video talking about the six changes that I would like to see BA make to its executive club, and one of them was to allow people to move their year ends to align them with their friends or family. This isn't perhaps how I wanted BA to do it, but at least they are doing it. I get lots of comments from couples who have different year ends, so they really struggle to synchronise their status. 
So if they can't synchronize and travel with a couple of friends or with a couple of kids, they may not have the right status to be able to guest the entire group into the lounges, which means none of them get to go in the lounges. Notwithstanding a few bumps in the transition period, this could be really, really good news for people in this situation. So I think this will be good news for a large group of people, and I also think it will be neutral for quite a number of people too. Many won't notice, many won't care, and many, sadly, won't understand what's happening to them. And those people who earn tier points consistently through the year, and earn them consistently across the years, probably won't be affected much by this, as they won't need to change their behaviours to maintain their status. But those who are negatively affected are likely to be people like us, who analyse schemes very carefully to find opportunities to achieve status with the minimum time, money and effort. BA usually starts announcements like this with, we are constantly improving our executive club, before they announce something terrible like ripping the guts out of the avios that you earn when flying with them. Which is patronising and infuriating. On this occasion, for many people, BA is right and then it will make things simpler and easier. Hey, it'll make things easier for me as a YouTuber as I won't constantly have to explain that pesky grace period. But consequence number two will affect me though. Although I may not care that I'm affected. I've talked before about how earning gold status very early within your membership year, and ideally within the grace period, gives you gold status for two years. But as there is a soft landing to silver at the end of that second year if you haven't retained gold again, you can get lounge access for three years as a result of one confined flurry of travel. So looking back at my situation, I will get back to gold later this month, which would give me gold for the balance of my current year till August 2024, the entirety of the next year till August 2025, plus the grace period through to the end of September 2025. Then, if I haven't gone back up to gold again, I will get a year of silver status through to August 2026, plus the grace period again at the end of that to September 2026. And after that, I'll soft land to bronze where there's no lounge access. So I'm expecting to get three years of lounge access from the travel that I'm doing at the moment, but that third year is now being curtailed by the resetting of the membership year ends. So I'm going to lose five months of status and lounge access as a result of this change. Someone with a March year end is going to lose two months, and somebody with a November year end will lose a pretty chunky eight months of status. Which is actually quite unpleasant, but I also think it's quite unfair. I have invested money in achieving that status with a very set expectation of what I'm going to receive in return. And BA is now not proposing to offer the benefits that I was expecting to receive. I'm not a lawyer, although I know a few people watching this are, so I can't judge what the legal situation is here, so I don't know whether I'll have recourse to BA for changing what I consider to be a contract that is already in progress. But, as I hinted, I might not care. I've historically not taken advantage of that soft landing, instead I've gone back up to gold again in the grace period to avoid ever falling back to the silver tier. And if I do that again under these new rules, I'll not really care that I'm losing five months of silver status because I wouldn't have been using it anyway. But anyone who gets their status on a three-year cycle as opposed to my two-year cycle could well find themselves seriously disadvantaged by this change, particularly if their old membership month then fell towards the end of the calendar year. And I'll be very interested to see if BA decides to honour the soft landing status duration that people may have been relying on. So consequence two actually triggers two more consequences, and I'm going to talk about the grace period first. Grace periods used to run from the first day of your membership year on the 9th of your month to the end of the following month, which was between 51 and 54 days, depending on the month and depending on whether it was a leap year. The Anorak in me has wanted to share this table with you for years now, and as soon as I do, BA changes the scheme. Typical. Under the new scheme, everyone's grace period will be the same, it will be 30 days long, and it will be the calendar month of April. So instead of scheme optimization specialists like us having 50 plus days to renew our status in periods spread across a year, everyone looking to optimize their status will now be doing it in the exact same month. Plus Easter falls in April about 70% of the time, and the Easter school holidays will take up a chunk of April every year. So this is going to be a right 
pain. People have suggested that BA starts scheduling A380s on flights to Sofia, as that is such a popular place for people to go who are looking for cheap tier points. And some people have also observed that pressure is likely to build up in March too. Not something that may always be on our radars, but lots of people get close to the end of their year and realise they're only a short distance away from achieving status, so they look to book something last minute in their last month to achieve that status, which means that the tier points they've gathered won't be wasted. Now they're all going to now be doing that in March as well, which is going to potentially put quite a lot of pressure on airfares in that month as well as on April. So I predict that fares are going to go a bit crazy in those months. Fares from Europe to the west coast of America that could relatively easily be turned into tier point runs used to be decent value in April as domestic business travel in the US drops across the Easter period. But now, if there are hundreds or perhaps even thousands of people looking to do that same sort of trip, it means that fare pricing is only going to go in one direction. I had to schedule some of my renewal travel outside of my grace period this year for various reasons, so I have suffered the ignominy of having to travel through the airport as only a silver card holder. But it was okay, and I think that is now going to be the norm for many of us. Getting status back inside 30 days is really quite tricky to do anyway, and doing so at a decent cost when everyone else is trying to do the same is going to be very, very tricky. The second consequence of consequence two, which is consequence four, concerns people who have already planned travel for their next membership year. People like my mate Shane, hi Shane and congrats Katya, who's already booked the travel he needs into his next membership year to get himself back to gold. These changes mean he, and anyone like him, is going to be really quite annoyed. Time for another chart. I mentioned that membership years already in progress won't be affected, but everybody's next membership year will be curtailed. Shane has the same expiry month as me, and with travel booked into August and September 2024, would expect to then have gold status through to September 2026. But following this announcement, the travel he's booked will now count towards a year ending March 2025, rather than August which means he'll lose four months of status as a result of the curtailed year and another month as a result of the curtailed grace period. So in total, he'll lose five months of gold status versus what he expected when he made those bookings. Once again, I don't know his precise legal status, but he booked travel expecting to get something in return from BA and is now not going to get that. I would hope BA does the decent thing and gives him the status that he was expecting as he booked all of this travel in good faith. I think you'd have no chance of getting concessionary treatment from BA if you book travel now, after the announcement has been made. But if you have travel already on the books, I'd be on the phone to BA to make it very, very clear to them that you're not happy with how this decision is going to affect you. Again, to me, it feels very much like BA is changing the rules of an effective contract that is already in force. Consequence number five is that there is actually an opportunity wrapped up in all of this. Going back to my chart, and as we've seen, I will have gold through till September 2025. Ordinarily, I'd look to get another 1500 tier points between August the 9th and September the 30th to maintain my gold status before I drop back to silver. So although the technical grace period has been curtailed to just one month in length, next year I'll effectively have a six month grace period, which will run from April to September. That'll be a period where I have gold, but the points that I accumulate will go towards my next membership year, which ironically will be a year that I'm already in. Because I'm getting status grandfathered into that next membership year, that creates this opportunity. And I'll flash up the 12 charts that I made earlier to remind you of how long your grace period effectively will be next year. Instead of the usual 24 months of gold I'd get for renewing within my grace period under the old calendar, I'll only get 18 this time around, but I think the opportunity to time my travel over a longer time window will compensate for the shortening of the status that I earn. I might change my mind on that conclusion, but right now it doesn't feel egregious. Then when I'm looking to renew again in 2027, provided I can get 1500 tier points within that 30 day grace period, I'll secure 24 months of status again, so this shortening of the status window is only going to apply to one cycle. And I think it means there won't be such a massive crush on flights for April 2025, as almost everyone will have some form of lengthened grace period which will take the pressure off that specific month. 
provided people understand the transition well enough to act rationally, of course. And finally, point number six, and I'm going to be a bit more philosophical here, but what is BA trying to do here? BA doesn't do anything unless there's a quid in it for them, which is the same with all corporations. So they must think that this will generate an overall cost saving for them. I can't immediately see how, but it could make their systems a little easier and it should make their communication much simpler. I can't believe they're saving any money through their call centres right now as this announcement will create a tremendous amount of anxiety that people will call up to express. I always say in videos like this that the executive club is BA's, it's not ours. And it exists to maximise BA's profits, not to deliver excess value to us over and above what we put into the BA scheme. Whenever somebody finds a way in any loyalty scheme to generate value in excess of what they're contributing, they should expect the scheme's owner to move to close those avenues sooner rather than later. So I see this as BA taking a step down the road of making it much, much more expensive for people to achieve status, which will make their loyalty strategy more profitable overall which is 100% their prerogative, and as a corporation it's actually sort of their duty. And even if it annoys some of us, they're going to do it anyway. They've already linked the avios you receive from flying with them to the price of the ticket that you paid, which increases the net cost overall of getting status. Narrowing the grace period and forcing everyone into the same window seems to be a clear obstacle that's being created to prevent people from renewing in this way. And the offer recently launched with Amex, whereby you can get 200 tier points if you spend £25,000 through your card, is a clear signpost of where things may well be going. American frequent flyer schemes now commonly base status on the spend made by the traveller. And I'd say it's pretty safe to assume that that is the direction that BA and their parent IAG is looking to move in. So this will be annoying for many, it'll be great for some, and it'll be quite upsetting for a few people, such as my friend Shane, who's made a significant investment from BA where he will now not get the return from that that he was expecting. But that is very much the direction that BA is moving in, and perhaps we should be grateful that they didn't take a bigger step towards revenue-based status alongside these changes. So there you go. I hope that wasn't too dreadfully dry to listen through and I hope you were able to understand the points that I was making and follow the charts that I've made to illustrate this. Please give this video a like. I think it will help it be found by more people who are perhaps affected by this but aren't normal viewers of this sort of content. And similarly, leave me a comment. Doing so increases the profile of the video and makes YouTube push it out further. Subscribe if you're new and you like this kind of thing, and if you would like to support what I'm doing more directly, there is a Patreon account link in the description below. Thanks again, see you all soon, goodbye.